What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition War for Cybertron Voyager Class Starscream. And it's surprisingly not a bad update. It's actually pretty good. You know, when some of those very first product shots were revealed, I had almost immediately struck this off as being yet another massive flop for the Gamer Edition subline. But honestly, after messing around with this for myself, alongside Optimus Prime, I think Starscream is one of the best entries in this subline. Line. As we directly compare him to his in-game character model, not only are the details mostly spot on, but so is the shade of plastic. It definitely does match the darker lighting conditions that we saw from that original 2010 game. My only real big issue with this guy would have to be the cockpit. Now to be fair, in person it looks nowhere near as bad as how it originally appeared in some of those first in-hand images, but it definitely is much larger than how it appeared on screen, and that's a shame because it would have been so easy to fix had Hasbro added some silver to the right and the left hand side they could have easily narrowed this off but it's not too late because even a sticker upgrade I think could potentially fix this because besides the cockpit it's actually a pretty banging star scream as we check out the details the face sculpt I think is looking sick he finally now has the accurate metallic blue helmet to match the forearms and the feet and the rest of the robot design is surprisingly pretty filled in for a mainline Voyager there are some hollow spaces here for the thighs but with the exception of those he's actually actually kind of stacked and it's wicked to see these massive blast effect ports in the soles of his feet. So you can smack some effects and make him look like he's flying which is brilliant because that is mainly how we see Starscream in the game and as we check him out here from the back this is straight up fantastic. Because your main point of view in the game is the back of any of the Transformers characters that you're playing it's wicked to see just how accurate this is to the game. Check out how the wings stack up and I would argue that the back of this guy is even more filled in than the front. So overall definitely a banging star scream a release which i'm hoping has potentially turned the tide when it comes to some of these war for cybertron updates and as we check out his weapon loadout, up first we have what I believe is officially titled as his Null Ray, but let's all face it, this is a sniper rifle. Very nicely detailed, although unfortunately is lacking any kind of paint. And like some of the past Gamer Edition releases, the right forearm can be removed and the weapon attached to kind of give you the impression that much like in the game, this has transformed out of his forearm. Now this is a feature which I think looks better for some characters than others, so it's really cool to see them now finally integrate. 5mm posts onto every single weapon. This is great because personally, especially in the case of Starscream, I think he looks way cooler holding this weapon than he does having it integrated into his arm. And then the final weapon this guy includes would be his Energon Mace, which is looking sick. Check out some of those Cybertronian details we have embedded in the main mace itself. And it's surprisingly a pretty weighty weapon to be included with a Voyager. And surprisingly, it's quite large. I mean, check it out in comparison to Starscream's robot mode. So he definitely shouldn't have any issues in clubbing the Autobots or maybe even Lord Megatron to death if he wants to take the throne of Cybertron. Now, checking out Starscream's posability, he's surprisingly quite agile for a character which, let's all face it, is on the chunkier side. So, up first, the head is on a ball joint. This can look up all the way, which is brilliant, especially for some of those in-flight poses. It can then look down, tilt side to side, just a tiny bit, but it can rotate left to right, so that's sick. The shoulders will move forwards, they will move backwards, they'll hinge out to the side. There is a bicep cut and a supreme double-jointed elbow, mainly due to transformation. He's also packing in a wrist joint which I thought was kind of surprising considering there is no visible mushroom peg from the underside and despite the massive cockpit he's even packing a proper waist joint so that is really cool the hips will kick forward all the way to that far so that is a fantastic high kick they will kick back roughly to that far they can then go out to the side to be fair they could probably go even further so that's great the thighs are on a swivel the knees can bend slightly past 90 for some strange reason they also lock in for the robot mode not quite sure why and then finally the ankles have this rocker and kind of inbuilt gap fillers so from certain angles it makes the sculpt look complete but if you pull them slightly too far out it definitely does cut itself off but definitely not a bad range of motion again for a slightly chubbier character but you guys know the drill to see what he is truly capable of now let's put him through the pose test
And checking out some comparisons, on the right hand side we have the Transformers Reactivate Starscream. So, the most recent video game reincarnation of the character. It's honestly kind of cool to see the evolution between these two designs. Here is how he sizes up against the Transformers Siege Voyager Starscream. The Transformers Earthrise slash Studio Series Leader Starscream. So definitely a pretty decent size for a Voyager. And then whacking out the big guns with the War for Cybertron Voyager Optimus Prime. As I mentioned previously, personally I think these are two of the best updates that we've so far seen released for this subline. Unfortunately I never owned the original Fall of Cybertron Deluxe Starscream. And whilst that does seem to be an absolute banger, I think articulation and engineering wise this one is definitely superior. Not to mention it's also a Voyager so it's way better to scale with some of the more recent releases. Here is how he stacks up against the leader of the Decepticons and I find it kind of crazy that Starscream has a better figure than this Megatron. It really is just nuts. How does it feel, mighty Megatron? Here is how he compares alongside the Deluxe Class Barricade, which I was messing around with prior to this review. Damn, this thing is an absolute monstrosity. Definitely takes the cake for being, I think, the worst Studio Series release of all time. And then finally, here we have Bumblebee, who I thought was a pretty decent update, but between the two, Starscream definitely takes the win. Now, checking out Starscream's transformation, it's actually super unique. So for the first step, you are going to want to take a hold of the shoulder intakes, compress them inwards towards Starscream's head sculpt. Then we can spin down here to the feet, take a hold of the front toes only, and slide these into the soles. So do the same here for this side. Then we will spin around here to the back of Starscream, take a hold of one of these red wings, hinge them outwards just like that, and then take a hold of them and hinge them downwards. They will then completely extend this joint here do the exact same here for this side so click outwards and then bring this joint here all the way down with that now complete we can spin starscream to the side take a hold of the backpack and remove it away from the main torso i thought it was kind of cool how even the joint has been fully detailed to kind of resemble starscream spinal column then what you'll do is make use out of this mushroom peg so spin these panels here all the way to the top and do the same here for this side then we will take these back fins spin these here around and do the same here for this side so that eventually they meet directly in the middle. Now we are going to completely open Starscream's backpack up. So bring this panel here down and packed inside are the jet mode intake. So definitely make sure that you flip those bad boys out, snap this here into place and leave the backpack exactly like that for now. Then we will spin around to the front of Starscream, which is definitely where things can get a little challenging. So you are going to want to take a hold of this enormous chest plate and pull it towards yourself. With that now complete, we can then take the cockpit, slide this forwards, and stored away inside is the nose cone. So thread this through until it meets up with the cockpit. So at the moment, it should be looking like this. Then we can grab a hold of Starscream's head sculpt. You are first of all going to want to bring this forwards on this super sturdy red hinge joint. Once that's complete, we can then take a hold of the head itself and pull it upwards. So then you are going to straighten out this blue hinge joint. Then we can spin the head around so the back is now facing the front and this is going to completely flip back on itself and store away inside the cockpit just like that. Then we can take the cockpit itself, snap this over the top and these intakes on the underside are packing these tiny little tabs. They are going to slide into those slots. So snap them into place and then straighten out the entire front part of the jet. Now we can turn our attention here to the arms. So flip the shoulders here upwards on both sides and make use out of those amazing double jointed elbows. So for this we are basically going to compress them backwards at one joint and then fold them up at this joint so they should look exactly like this do the same here for this side so compress them backwards hinge them upwards then what we'll do is compress all of these hinge joints on the inside so fold these here down just like that and do the same here for this side now on the inside of the forearms are these tiny little slots they are going to slide into those tabs so first of all make sure you take a hold of this one with the tab so we're going to slide this in snap that into place the same process and steps applies to this side although the only difference is that this slot is going to slide into that tab as well so bring that in snap that there into place then we turn to starscream's legs so rotate here at the thigh take hold of this panel and pop it clean open it does stay tabbed in there super securely and on the inside of the leg is yet another double hinge joint so you are going to want to bring this down 
and then bend it at a second hinge joint. And as you guys can see, there is this tab that is going to slide into that cutout. So perfectly line that up until it clicks into place. Now on the top of this panel is this tiny slot that's going to find itself going into that tab. So store that in there. Do the same here for this side. So pop this panel open, rotate at the thigh, utilizing this double hinge joint. Make sure that you shift this here all the way up until it does snap there into place. Again, line that little slot up with that tab. So snap that into place, rotate here at both of the thighs. So at the moment, he should look exactly like this. And then for some finishing touches on the back are these two slots here and here. They are going to slide in to those tabs. So take the entire backpack, launch this here backwards until everything clicks into place. And for two final steps, take a hold of these tiny little wings and flip these here out to the sides. And bang, here we have Starscream fully transformed into his Cybertronian jet mode. And overall, I think it's quite cool. Definitely a lot bigger than I was expecting. Although much like in robot form, when this guy was first announced, there were really two issues I had. The first one was the cockpit, which even for this mode, I think is a little too oversized. And the second one would be how tiny the wings looked. Although since the reveal, I have gone back, rewatched some actual gameplay of War for Cybertron. And this scale does seem to be pretty spot on to the CG model. So definitely an upgrade in terms of accuracy, I think, when compared to the Fall of Cybertron Deluxe. I think it's quite cool how the soles of the feet become the thrusters. If you smack some blast effects in them, you can make it look as if those Starscream is turbocharging through the battlefield. And the undercarriage for a jet former, I definitely don't think is bad by any means. So all in all, definitely a really sweet looking jet mode to accompany a pretty banging looking robot mode. And checking out some weapon storage, much like some of the previous Gamer Edition releases, is pretty much non-existent, especially when it comes to that massive mace. Although the Null Race slash Sniper Rifle I don't think looks too bad, and this too is also Blast Effect compatible. So if you wanted that to be Starscream's main form of firepower for this form, then I don't think he's going to have any issues in taking out some of those Autobots, or maybe even Lord Megatron. Now, checking out some jet mode comparisons, on the right hand side we have the Transformers Reactivate Starscream, which, if you guys remember, I said reminded me of something released pre-2010 in terms of its size. So, when you consider that between this comparison, Studio Series Starscream definitely ain't slacking. Next up we have the Transformers Siege War for Cybertron Starscream, the Transformers Earthrise slash Studio Series 86 Starscream, Voyager Class, Gamer Edition, Optimus Prime. As I mentioned previously, two of the best updates I think we've so far seen for this subline, even in their alt modes. Despite Prime having some issues in the rear department, they are two very big Voyagers. And it's still crazy to me that Starscream, even in jet mode, I think destroys the look of the tank mode that we have here for the War for Cybertron Megatron. I really am hoping that when it comes around to his Fall of Cybertron update, they can massively overhaul not only the size, but some of the details of this guy. Here we have the Deluxe Class Barricade, which whilst I think is definitely one of the worst Studio Series figures ever, definitely has size on its side. I mean, for a Deluxe Class, it stacks up pretty nicely alongside this actual jet mode. And then finally, we have the smallest out of the bunch, the Deluxe Class Gamer Edition Bumblebee. So definitely a very decent Deluxe to Voyager ratio. And so, wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Studio Series, War for Cybertron, Voyager Class, Starscream. Definitely a pleasant surprise. I was thinking that alongside the Junkion, this would be one of the weakest entries in this Studio Series wave. But honestly, I think stacked up against the concept art Megatron, those are two of the best. I really like the robot mode for the most part. The cockpit is a little too big, but as I mentioned, in hand, it looks nowhere near as bad as I've seen it made out to be online. The articulation for a chunky dude is wicked and the accessories are sick especially when it comes to the size of that massive energon mace starscream is a chunky voyager you know there are barely no hollow spaces on this guy at all so i wasn't expecting him to include as much as he does even the sniper rifle despite not being painted has a really solid sculpt transformation is something unique definitely different to the majority of starscreams that i've checked out in recent years and the jet mode is pretty spot on to how it appeared in the game i would love to get your thoughts on this Starscream down in the comment section below. I want to thank you all so much for watching and until my next review, transform and roll out!